Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In one of the previous videos, we talked about glycogenesis, the process of making glycogen. And we saw that at some point, the major enzyme involved in this synthesis is glycogen synthase. So remember that glycogen is a polymer of glucose units. You can see one chain of those right here. Again, the action of glycogen synthase is fairly straightforward. It's just going to lengthen the chain of glucoses by one glucose unit every single catalytic cycle. So again, glycogen synthase acts here. We get chain lengthening by one glucose. It acts again, chain lengthening by another glucose, and so on and so forth. Remember that the glucose donor is this molecule shown over here called UDP glucose. This is an activated form of glucose, and this phosphate, or these two phosphates with the nucleotide right here, make this carbon right where my mouse is, the one position, extremely reactive. That's going to play a role in the mechanism of glycogen synthase, and that's what we're going to look at right now. So what you see right here in pink, this is the glucose of UDP glucose. It's attached to a phosphate right here, second phosphate right here, and then here's the uracil nucleoside. So this whole thing is UDP glucose. Now as part of the enzyme, we have this catalytic glutamate residue. You can see it's deprotonated. And it's going to have a lone pair here that's going to attack that one position of glucose from the top. So recall what I said about this UDP moiety. All this right here makes this carbon extremely reactive, especially to nucleophilic attack. And so this is an example of an SN2 reaction. So glutamate here is going to attack this carbon right here, and you're going to have loss of a leaving group. And so this is an SN2 type of mechanism from organic, but what happens is now you have that glutamate that becomes covalently attached to that one position from the top. Okay. Now what you see over here on the right side, this is really just part of a lengthening chain of glycogen. Again, you can see one glucose right here, here's a second one right here, and again, these three dots just goes on and on and on and on, okay? So as it stands for this chain of glycogen, this glucose right here in black, this is the terminal glucose. But you can see here on the four position, we have this oxygen. It was an OH, but once it becomes deprotonated, this oxygen can now attack this one position from the bottom. Again, that makes sense because the glutamate is now covalently bound from the top. And again, this is another SN2 type of mechanism. So what happens is, is on this glucose, which was the terminal glucose of this glycogen branch, its four position oxygen, once deprotonated, attacks this one position of this glucose from below, and it expels the glutamate residue of the enzyme as a leaving group. And so now what you've effectively done is you've lengthened this glycogen chain by one glucose unit. Now one thing to understand here from this mechanism is why glycogen has so many alpha 1 to 4 linkages. Alpha 1 to 4. Well, If we look at this newly added glucose, notice that its one position right here is now covalently attached through this oxygen of the 4 position of the previous glucose in the chain of glycogen. And the same thing goes here. This glucose right here, its one position, is attached to the four position of the previous glucose in the chain. So that explains the one to four. Now the question is, why do we have this alpha in these alpha one to four linkage? Well, for that, we look at the first position of the glucose, which is this anomeric carbon. Recall that the anomeric carbon can have this oxygen right here, either going up, which it's not here, or down, which it is. And so what you do is you look at this oxygen and say, hey, is it going the same direction as this CH2OH right here? Or is it going the opposite direction? And in this case, it's going the opposite direction. Notice the CH2OH is going up, whereas this oxygen is coming off down from the anomeric carbon. So because those two positions are going in opposite directions, uh, this anomeric carbon we can say is in the alpha conformation. And so because it's in the alpha conformation and links the one position right here, or the anomeric carbon, to the four position of the previous glucose, it's termed an alpha 1 to 4 linkage.
So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the glycogen synthase mechanism and also why glycogen has so many alpha 1 to 4 linkages. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.